The next item of business is a member's business debate on motion 8077 in the name of Claire Adamson on Road Safety Week 2017. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put. I would encourage members who wish to speak in the debate to press their request to speak buttons now. And I call on Claire Adamson to open the debate. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I thank the members from across the Chamber who supported my motion and for those members who will be speaking this evening. I'd also like to thank the charity Break for their efforts in promoting Road Safety Week and for all of their efforts to reduce injury and deaths on our roads throughout the year. As the convener of the Cross-Party Group on Accident Prevention and Safety Awareness, it's been my pleasure to work with many charitable organisations such as ROSPA, local authorities, the insurance companies and government agencies who seek to improve safety on our roads. This year's campaign is about reducing speed. Speed down saves lives. Focuses on driving over the speed limit and asking drivers to consider how fast they are driving in certain situations. Presiding officer, many of us will remember the harrowing road safety ad advice advert of a little girl um, explaining the different levels of injury sustained at different speeds and the very graphic images from that. That was in 2009, I can't believe it's so long ago. Um, but she explains that at um, an 80% survival rate for someone who is hit at 30 miles per hour, and this decreases rapidly the faster that you drive. But when we've moved on from there, and now 2020's campaigns have paid dividends in many local authority areas, such as my own in North Lanarkshire, in improving a re a, the reduction in injuries and deaths as a result of being um, involved in a road traffic accident. And um, the adoption of this approach near schools and in residential streets has been beneficial in many of our local authority areas. Um, the Scottish Government is committed through the road safety framework to reducing risk on Scotland's road. And a mid-term review of the framework concluded last year has identified speed, pedestrians for, and cyclists as priority areas for the activity through to 2020. And our road, the road safety partners of the government have a commitment to encourage local authorities to introduce 20 mile an hour zones or limits in residential areas and places with a high volume of pedestrians and cyclists. And it is set out in the 2015 Good Practice Guide for our local authorities and I fully support the government's position on this area but I know that my colleague Mark Ruskell will wish to talk about his proposed bill that would um, put that into statute. Residing officer this is the point where I get to talk about two of the things that I'm most interested in and that's safety awareness and digital technology and I want to just talk about some of the modern um, applications to road safety that are available now. Um, this campaign this year also focuses on intelligent speed adaptations. Intelligent speed adaptations, or ISAs, are an on-board system that helps the driver comply with speed limits. It uses GPS to connect the vehicle to a digital road map and either advise the driver of the limit in an advisory ISA or can actually intervene in the operation of the vehicle to um, uh, reduce the speed and alert the driver to the, the fact that they may be in danger of breaking the speed limit. Of course, this is dependent on having an accurate digital road map that accurately reflects the local authority speed limits that have been imposed across Scotland. And I would um, uh, ask the Minister if he's possible to give us an update on how Scotland's development of such a digital map is going at the moment. Intelligent speed adaptations aid the driver and the rider in maintaining road speeds and alert them to their own driving behaviour. And like black box technology, it has been proven to improve the driving of um, the driving um, capabilities of people over time by alerting them to um, behaviour that may be of a risky nature, such as breaking the speed limit but also um, excessive acceleration and excessive braking. And I know that um, this is something that the insurance companies are very 
uh, encouraged to support, for, especially for new drivers, and it can actually reduce your insurance premiums if you're willing to have a black box fitted into your, your car. Um, what's really exciting is that the black box technology and also the ISAs can also be rolled out into fleet vehicles, making the operation of um, fleets um, for local authorities, for other um, major companies that are using our roads um, to ensure that their driving is of the very safest it can be. This has been trialled across Europe, um, particularly in Denmark, and it's noted that it did cause not just a decrease in the average speeds of the people fitted with the devices, but also the awareness of the devices in particular areas also seem to have an effect on other vehicles in the area. And it's something that certainly would, would improve our road safety and reduce the number of injuries and deaths. Um, we know almost 10,000 people were injured on the roads of Scotland in the 12 months to June. And recent figures show that provisional statistics from the Department of Transport that 9,864 people were injured and 159 were killed in crashes on Scotland's roads. This is something that we can do a lot to alleviate. It's something that we can prevent and anything that can be done should be considered a priority going forward as nothing is more important than the safety of our young vehicle drivers and young people and pedestrians and cyclists on our road. Could I just finally finish, presiding officer, by saying that um, as well as the charities who have um, campaigned in this area for road safety, I also want to just uh, pay tribute to some of the charities who support people who are bereaved or have been involved in this, such as the Road Peace Charity. It's a, an international charity that supports families and the victims of road traffic accidents. And they also campaign to improve legislation across the world and to highlight some of the, the new technologies and the information that is there. So I'd like to thank again the Chamber for coming together this evening to discuss this important matter. And um, I'm looking forward to the rest of the debate. Thank you very much. Thank you, and I call David Torrance to be followed by Tom Mason. David Torrance. Thank you, President Officer. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank Claire Addison for bringing forward this motion to the Chamber this afternoon to recognise the Road Safety Week, the country's biggest road safety event. I'd also like to thank Break, the Road Safety Charity Coordinating Events this week. Speed is one of the most common causes of road accidents. We know that the driver's speed choice is influenced by many factors. They could be running late, they might be overtaking other drivers or trying to keep up with traffic might be driving on an empty road at night and they might even be speeding to stay awake. While we know that the driver behaviour is difficult to change, what is clear is that the best intervention and one that is the Scottish Government's priority is speed reduction. This is the theme of this year's Road Safety Week, Speed Down, Save Lives, which focuses on the dangers of driving over the speed limit. A number of interventions has been identified to be effective in the management and control of vehicle speeds and setting and enforcing a speed limit are two of the most effective measures. However, recent studies have shown that in many countries, the introduction of speed limits will only have a short-lived effect on reducing speed unless speed-reducing legislation is accompanied by sustained, visible enforcement of these li limits. The biggest challenge we face is to change driver perceptions on speeding, and this is certainly is a greater, great challenge to overcome. Inappropriate speed contributes to around 6% of all injury collisions reported to the police. Speed not only affects road safety, but also environment as a result of high levels of exhaust emissions, high levels of traffic noise, fuel consumption, and has an enormous impact on the quality of life for people living or working near busy roads. High speeds and large speeds variations have a negative effect on each of these factors. Therefore, the road safety policy and environment policy should have much in common, and it is imperative that road safety organisations and charities cooperate with environmental groups. Smart traffic lights are currently being developed in order to reduce vehicle emissions, combining existing technology with artificial intelligence so that traffic lights communicate with each other and adapt to change traffic conditions to reduce the amount of time that cars spend idling. The pilot study results show that the amount of time motorists spend idling at lights was reduced by 40% and travel times were reduced by 25%. A similar system across Scotland would have a massive benefit not only for road safety of passengers and drivers, as it encourages motorists to stay within speed limits, it, speed limits, but also to environment. Scotland roads are among the safest in the world. However, there continues still to be far too many deaths and serious injuries on Scotland roads. 
The Safe Drive Stay Alive campaign recently celebrates 15 years of promoting road safety in Fife, with an interactive event hosted at Ruffis Halls in Glenrothes. The roadshow highlights the dangers faced by new and young drivers on Fife roads and demonstrates to visitors what happens when you're not in control of your surroundings. Practitioners from the All Emergency Services were on hand to explain the role in the aftermath of a traffic accident. The importance of these events cannot be overstated and I welcome the continued work of the campaign. Speeding traffic and its effect on the road safety is a major concern and is a regular topic of discussions at many community councils and tenants and residents association meetings held across my constituency. The majority of residents are strongly in favour of extending the 20 mile per hour lift speed limits. However, with, as with local authorities across the wider Scotland, the limited funding available for introduction of 20 mile zone schemes assorted traffic, associated traffic carrying measures means that councils must use traffic surveys and accident data to identify which sites would benefit most from the introduction of traffic calming measures. The majority of pedestrian casualties occur in built-up areas. Cyclists are the most vulnerable in built-up areas, while almost half of cyclist deaths and most cyclist casualties occur on these roads. Reducing speed limits to 20 miles an hour goes some way to balancing the needs of all users. As vehicle speeds are reduced, people are more confident to walk and cycle within their streets, whilst drastically reducing accidents. It's therefore our responsibility as policymakers to promote legislation that promotes economic growth by improving and maintaining infrastructure, promoting social inclusion by connecting remote communities as well as disadvantaged communities, investing in public transport and environmental forms of transportation, and ultimately promoting safe measures by reducing the frequency and severity of accidents on our roads. Thank you, President Officer. I call Tom Mason to be followed by David Stewart. Tom Mason. Starting off, sir, thank you, and thanks to Claire Adderton for bringing this motion forward, particularly during Road Safety Week. Arguably, the motor car has defined the modern era. We certainly have a deep relationship with the internal combustion engine since its introduction over 100 years ago. We all remember our first car, our first new car, our first sports car, or even our first luxury car. In my case, I fell in love with three sports cars, Samantha, Clancy, and Tiffany. For the petroheads among you, they were MGs, a TC, a TD2, and a TF. For the car, it's a wonderful piece of kit. It takes us almost anywhere we want, when we want. We can store no end of personal possessions, anything from overnight cases to items partners do not want in the house, including, in my case, croaky clubs, personal music, and even disgusting dog blank blankets. It becomes part of us and reflects our character and pastimes. It keeps us warm and we hope that it keeps us safe. Like all relationships, there are responsibilities and this is where problems can arise. When researching material for this debate, I read some harrowing figures. For example, on the A90 alone, there have been 19 collisions, 15 involved with multiple vehicles since August. That works out at more than a crash a week on average just for one road, and sadly, such targets and tragedies are not limited to the north. I'm sure that most members have similar stories to tell. So, presiding officer, so I'm so pleased to support the Road Safety Week, the work being done by Break to raise awareness of the dangers of speeding. I think that there are specific problems, particularly with young motorists, who are less aware of their own mortality and less to fail to appreciate the risks involved with, dri with driving. Now, the root causes of many accidents relate to both drivers' ability and the road conditions themselves. Far too many roads are extremely narrow with unexpected bends, many of which are poorly signposted. These factors can be a recipe for disaster, especially around this time of year. And, what is without me and this is without mentioning relatively new problems caused by operating and looking at mobile phones or satellite navigation screens whilst driving. Technology may have advanced significantly over the last few years, but our ability to multitask has not. Although I am encouraged by the improvements of safety features installed in, years, in cars in recent years, I hope this trend continues. I believe that technology can help, help us here, and this has already been mentioned with the black box. Presiding officer, all this makes the central message of speed down, safe lives more important. I believe that our driving training should do more to educate drivers on the very real dangers of speeding. 
and the impact that the potential consequences have not just on them, but on their families and many others. We have made the provision for older drivers having to prove their ability to drive safely on a regular basis. So there is scope for examining how we improve standards in our young drivers as well. We need to look at examples from over overseas to achieve this. Presiding officer Road Safety Week should remind us that our cars, whilst very useful, have the potential to be dangerous when not used properly. It is vital for safety on all our road, for all our road users that we keep our speed to appropriate levels and not put ourselves, passengers, and many others at risk. Speeding isn't big and it isn't clever. It can be lethal. With this in mind, I gladly support break and the Road Safety Week and wish both success in the days and weeks to come. Thank you. Thank you very much. I call David Stewart to be followed by Mark Ruskell. <clears throat> uh, thank you, President Officer. And first of all, could I congratulate Claire Admiston on securing this evening's debate and thank her for all the work she does in accident prevention, particularly in the cross-party group. Uh, Road Safety Week is arranged, as we know, annually by the Road Safety Charity Break, an organisation that has a tremendous amount towards ed education of all road users. Break, in my view, are evangelistic about education and road safety and work very diligently with schools, colleges and businesses. And as we've heard, this year's campaign is Speed Down, designed to educate drivers about the dangers of excessive speed by highlighting the braking distance while driving at 30 and 35, which is uh, two car and three car lengths respectively. We've heard already from Claire Addison about some interesting statistics about speed. Let me throw another one into the mix. Uh, an American study by ProPaulico showed that if a car is traveling at 45 miles an hour, uh, any person hit will be killed. At 35 miles an hour, the chances of being killed plummet. Half of all elderly pedestrians would survive. But yet, if we go down to 20 miles an hour, 93% of all people hit would survive a crash. Uh, and I hope that Mark Ruskell's bill is successful, and I hope to be in a position uh, to support it when it uh, reaches the appropriate stage. Um, my, for the past eight years, uh, I've worked very closely with brake and road safety issues. And along with the road safety group I set up called uh, NOSTAT, the North of Scotland Drivers Awareness Group, over an eight-year period, our group have run 24 road safety campaigns. And I'm delighted to announce that uh, we picked up five brake campaign awards. The primary campaign I launched was the proposal to introduce a graduated license scheme for young and new drivers. And I know the Transport Minister has supported that proposal. Uh, the prompt for me to act was back in early 2010, when after a double fatal road collision involving two 17-year-olds within the city of Inverness, I was contacted by constituents pleading with me to do whatever I could to raise awareness of driving dangers and threats for young people and come up with a solution. The solution, as I said, was the graduated driving license scheme. We didn't just pluck it from the air. The campaign was based on the evidence of well-respected academic Dr Sarah Jones of Cardiff University, who carried out 10 years of study into Scottish and Welsh road traffic collisions. Dr Jones evidenced that if a graduate license scheme was introduced in Scotland alone, up to 80 million could be saved to the Scottish economy, and more importantly, up to 22 lives could be saved per year. One young person is killed every week on our roads in Scotland. 17 young people are seriously injured per week in Scotland, many of whom will be permanently disabled or scarred. Speed, bravado, inexperience, night driving, drink, drugs and distracting passengers can all be contributing factors to collisions. Uh, in America, New Zealand and Australia, the models of the uh, graduate driving license scheme can save young people's lives by planning for young drivers. There's no doubt that within Scotland there's a strong voice in support of this form of graduate license. Uh, but do we let the death and injury among our young drivers continue or do we do more? We need to prevent unnecessary injury, disfigurement and death to our young people, our next generation of drivers. And for families who have lost loved ones, unfortunately we cannot turn the clock back. We can, however, adopt a new, safer, proven driving regime aimed at slashing the loss of young people on our roads and preventing the deaths and injuries of our young drivers. I believe that some form of graduated license scheme is the way ahead. Presiding Officer Tom Payne, who is the American Revolutionary author, said, we have it in our power to begin the world all over again. For the parents who've lost a child, that will be their dearest wish. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I call on Mark Ruskell to be followed by Ash Denham.
Thank you, Presiding Officer. And can I um, join other members in thanking Claire Adamson for bringing forward this topic for debate and the considerable leadership that both Claire Adamson and Dave Stewart bring to the Scottish Parliament on road safety issues. Um, I'd also like to thank Brake, uh, who do some fantastic education work and support work, particularly for families uh, who've been affected by the tragedy of a road accident. And of course, Brake's theme this year, as we've heard already from members, is Speed Down, Save Lives. Now, Brake are one of a number of organisations who are supporting my Members' Bill proposal to change the default speed limit in built-up areas from 30 to 20 miles an hour. And I've been running a consultation, presiding officer, over the summer, um, gathering views from organisations and individuals across Scotland uh, about the bill and about how it could be implemented. Um, the figures show that 2,200 people responded, over 80% are in favour, and we know through studies uh, into 20 mile an hour areas that post-implementation public support goes up for 20 miles an hour rather than down. So I think we've got a good basis now uh, for me to go forward and to really ask the permission of Parliament uh, to introduce a member's bill uh, to this chamber. Um, reading through the responses, uh, some of the responses to those, uh, those cons that consultation, it was quite clear that the overriding concern of people is about road safety. And I think many people reflected on the fact that even if we reduce speed by a modest amount, even just a one mile an hour reduction in speed, means that we can cut the accident rate by, in that case, 7%. When I introduced the, the final bill proposal uh, on Monday, um, I got a, a, a tweet that came in from a constituent. I'll read this out to you. He said, I was involved in a car crash on Saturday in a 20 mile an hour zone, both cars within the speed limit, six passengers between us, no one injured. Uh, probably wouldn't have said that at 30 miles an hour. So it's quite clear that uh, reducing speed both reduces the number of accidents, but also the severity of the accidents as well. Um, but of course, looking at some of the statistics that, uh, that have been released by the Scottish Government, um, Brake have highlighted that excessive speed has been a major factor in 510 accidents uh, in the last year. Um, and I think you know, we need to look at, again, at what the real experiences are of people uh, who find themselves in that position. Reading through an, another couple of my uh, bill consultation responses, I'll read these out as, as quotes. Um, a pupil from my school was knocked down and killed last year on a road with a speed limit of 30 mile an hour. I wonder if a 20 mile an hour speed limit could have given a very different outcome to this tragic accident. And then another one, and the parent of, a two, of two children who were struck by a vehicle traveling fast in a residential area while they were walking to school with their mother. I think the views of my children and all other children in traffic decisions are woefully underrepresented. These decisions have direct impacts on the way they live, yet they have no input into this process. If you ask children, they would say that they want a 20 mile an hour limit. So for me, uh, one of the driving purposes of this bill is to support vulnerable road users and to support the needs of children. I want to ensure that children's voices are heard um, if I'm given the permission to now develop a bill. And it's why the Royal College of uh, Child and Paediatric Health, the NHS, and many parent councils around Scotland are now backing the move uh, for a default 20 miles an hour. Um, presiding officer, every um, fatal accident is an enormous tragedy. And um, I saw the aftermath of a, of a particular tragedy uh, near my community on, on Friday, a 17-year-old man uh, tragically lost his life uh, between Dune and, and Calendar. And I think it's important that we set an objective of vision zero, uh, that no death is acceptable. That's what we need to work towards. It may require the use of intelligent speed adaptation. It may require the use of a graduate license scheme and many other um, tools to, 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 to tackle this issue. Um, but I think speed limits are an important part of that mix. And the United Nations now has set 20 mile an hour as the global standard on streets where traffic mixes with pedestrians uh, and cyclists. So there's an opportunity here for Scotland to be progressive here, to take a global lead, but also to follow in, in the good footsteps of other countries and their cities in designating 20 mile an hour as the default, the proper speed for built up areas. Thank you. Thank you very much. I now call on Ash Denham to be followed by Maurice Corrie. Ash Denham. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and I would also like to extend my thanks to Claire Adamson for bringing this uh, Road Safety Week debate to the Chamber this evening, particularly because the dangers posed by vehicles going too fast is something that affects communities right across the country. 
Um, we know that across Scotland in built-up areas there are streets frequented by many road users, children, families, cyclists and walkers. And many of those streets are rightfully set already at 20 miles per hour speed limit for the safety of those individuals. Yet too often cars come barreling down these roads at extremely high speeds and compromise the safety that the speed limits are meant to maintain. Road Safety Week provides the means for individuals, organisations, businesses and MSPs to tackle speeding in their communities head on. In my constituency of Edinburgh Eastern, there is a road that runs past Craig and Tinney Primary School, where I have had reports of vehicles being driven at speeds of between 40 and 60 miles per hour. And this is especially dangerous because um, this is a busy junction and pedestrians, including school children, are crossing it regularly. Now, driving at double the speed limit in this area, um, frequented by children crossing the road, is particularly reckless. And especially because we know that one in four fatal crashes in the UK involve speeding as a contributory factor. Now, I've already taken several steps in trying to make that particular road safer, including working with the school PTA and a local councillor in order to try and get a crossing patrol put in. But unfortunately, um, that junction didn't meet the criteria for a patrol, so I'm now going to change and try and push for either a zebra or maybe a pelican crossing instead. But in addition, it's vital to make drivers passing through Craig and Tinney more aware of the dangers that are posed by speeding. And that's why I've reached out to Break, the road safety charity which started Road Safety Week two decades ago, in order to um, organise an anti-speeding campaign um, in the constituency next Thursday morning, my office and uh, uh, children from Craig and Tinney Primary School will be involved. So the idea is that the school pupils, the staff, teachers, we can put on a parade. Um, we can have banners um, instructing drivers that there's no need to speed and to speed down saves lives, which we've heard are the official themes for this year's campaigns. And Break can also provide an affable mascot, Zach the Zebra, to help reinforce this message that drivers ought to slow down and make the parade more colourful, hopefully. So taking action with a community-led campaign hopefully will bring much needed awareness to drivers that are going too fast. And it's a good reminder of how speeding and a result not being able to break in time can put innocent people's lives in danger. So I would encourage others across Scotland to take anti-speeding campaigns into their own communities to draw attention to an area where speeding might already be a problem. And thanks to the free support, guidance and campaign materials provided by Break, curbing the rates of speeding can have hopefully tangible results in our communities. So let's help the communities we represent take advantage of those resources so that just as Road Safety Week envisions, thousands of people across the country do take action on road safety. Because the fact is that speed causes death and serious injuries on our roads. So if thousands of people join in Road Safety Week and bring awareness to thousands of friends, neighbours or strangers, think how many lives could potentially be saved by that, just from di drivers simply remembering to slow down. And this is the kind of local action that motivates change. So I look forward to doing my part in my small part, patch of Edinburgh in, in the eastern part, and I'm sure that we'll hear of many other successful actions just like this across the country this week. Thank you very much, and I call on Horace Corey. <coughs> Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, can I begin by joining others in thanking Claire Adamson uh, for bringing today's debate on this very important topic to us today in the Chamber, and I fully support her motion. Uh, this is a problem I understand very well from my time as the lead council on road safety in Argyll and Butte Council, uh, which, as a large rural area with hundreds of miles of roads, suffers similar issues surrounding road safety, particularly with a large number of visitors um, <coughs> sorry, my glasses off, um, it, who, visiting Argyll and Butte uh, and several single-track roads, uh, <coughs> which um, often are populated with highland cattle, sheep, deer, uh, let alone sightseers taking that odd snap. It is important that we can change attitudes uh, as to how people act on the roads, and it is, it is welcome that Brake have been running the Sof Road Safety Week for 20 years now. In that time, the work of Brake and others has borne fruit as our roads are now significantly safer than they were when Brake began the Road Safety Week. In particular, I think that ensuring the message of Road Safety Week reaches every part of our community is of vital importance. And I was pleased to see how some police forces in our areas have been offering safe driving advice uh, in, in our areas recently. 
According to the list of participants on the website for Road Safety Week, those who are getting involved in, in this week include nursery schools, youth clubs, army bases, community campaigners, employers, sports clubs, fire officers, police services, local authorities, paramedics, and driving instructors, amongst others. And in particular, I believe involving young people in the week is a brilliant move. Improving their understanding, how they can be safe on the road, is vital by itself. But in addition, they tend to be good advocates in encouraging adults to be safe on the roads as well. And I know full well, when I get into a car, my, my son says, my dad belt up. So I obviously am really aware, aware of that. Anyway, um, anyone who has, has, has um, passed any one of the many primary schools we have in our areas that have now got homemade signs put up because parents, uh, teachers associations and parent teachers councils have been imploring adults to slow down can outside at least test to this too. The support the break offers as well to those taking part in the week. It is to be commended uh, from a look at their website in the Ro Road Safety Week. There is a lot of online stuff and also uh, physical resources available to those wanting to take part, such as a free action pack, ideas to help fundraise and much more. Statistics do show that despite the great work of organizations like Break and the advances we have made on the road safety side of life, we still face serious issues. For example, in my West Scotland region in Western Bartonshire, the number of people seriously injured in road collisions went up from in quarter one of 2016-17 to quarter one in 2017-18 by 120%. Also in the west of Scotland, in Renfrewshire, in 2016, the number of people who required medical treatment after an accident sat at 363. That's almost one for every day of the year. That is a massive number and one which we must seek to lower. And in conclusion, <coughs> uh, presiding officer, those two statistics highlight the need for ongoing work on road safety. This is probably a battle without an end point, though. And as long as people are driving, the need to educate the public on how they, they can stay safe on the roads will exist. And I imagine so will the need for Road Safety Week. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I will now ask the Minister Hamza Youssef to wind up the debate. Thank you, <coughs> Presiding Officer. Thanks to Claire Addison for putting forward this motion uh, and to everybody who's contributed. Uh, uh, of course, uh, much needed. Uh, debate because as almost all of us uh, have said one death on a road is one too many and I think I've spoken before in this chamber about the first time as transport minister uh, I received notification of a fatal accident on the trunk road network as transport ministers get whenever uh, there unfortunately uh, is one and it's a, a really powerful and impactful uh, moment and I know that uh, from the government not just transport minister but every single one of us in government uh, when there is a, a fatal accident uh, on our trunk road network or indeed of course on roads uh, across Scotland uh, then we don't take that uh, lightly uh, as uh, no member in this chamber does because behind every statistics and I'll go into some of those statistics of course behind every statistic is a human life and uh, each of you who have mentioned a fatality in your own constituency or region have touched upon that that they are not only of course unfortunately the individual who loses a life the family there the friends there but actually there's a wider community that's impacted uh, by that loss and it's not just the loss of life of, co uh, life, life, of course but um, really life-altering injuries uh, which can, ha can have that uh, huge impact so we must never forget that although we'll talk about statistics and, and that is needed and, and it is important in its own right uh, behind the, each of these statistics is a human story. Um, I'm really pleased to hear from members the local initiatives uh, taking place in their own again constituencies and regions and I'll try to touch uh, upon that, before doing so, perhaps I'll just give you a quick overview, presiding officer, of the Scottish Government's own framework. Uh, people have touched upon a road safety framework for 2020 to achieve safer roads. Uh, the framework sets out, sets out a vision, very ambitious uh, vision, of course, of no fatalities in Scotland's roads. And while this remains, as I say, an ambitious target, I, I clearly want to live in a Scotland where that is achieved, as again, I imagine does every single member uh, in this chamber. Uh, underpinning that vision are challenging casualty reduction targets and I was pleased to see that at the 2015 milestone we remain on track to achieve them uh, with fatalities reducing by 42 percent and that's compared to the 2004 to 2008 baseline however with 191 people killed on our roads in 2016 there simply can't be any room for complacency and there's more we must do. Um, the DFT, some, uh, one or two members mentioned the recently um, released statistics uh, by the DFT, they sh do show that in terms of 2017, we're making pr 
progress in the right direction in terms of uh, reducing the number of fatality on our roads now. That should be caveated because, of course, we haven't come to the end of 2017 and the winter season, unfortunately, sees a, a higher number of casualties in our roads than other seasons uh, across Scotland. Uh, the work of the, the Scottish Government and partner centres on five framework pillars, uh, the five E's as they're known, uh, education, engineering, enforcement, encouragement uh, and evaluation. I'll touch upon them, uh, although briefly, and try to bring in some of the remarks uh, from other uh, members uh, as well. In terms of education, each of us have mentioned educational initiatives in our own constituency that are either taking place or will be taking place. And uh, in a quote here from the United Nations states, to be effective road safety education should be provided on a systematic and continuous basis in preschool establishments, primary and secondary schools with out-of-school activities and places of further education. Uh, the reason for that, uh, very obvious, and again, each member has touched upon uh, some good initiatives that have taken place, or indeed, uh, in Ash Denham's case, that, that will be taking place. Uh, and we know that attitudes and behaviours are learned from an early age, and I was actually really pleased to hear from Maurice Corey that his son is the first one to tell him to build up. That's great. I'm sure he's learnt that, actually, from uh, his parents, uh, no doubt uh, about that, but uh, clearly to have that ingrained uh, into, your, into, your, into, your, into our children uh, at a young age uh, can only be uh, good uh, throughout uh, their lives. Such campaigns have long-term benefits, uh, but actually also change present behaviours uh, as well. We, we fund a, a number and a range of uh, uh, initiatives. I won't really go into them because of uh, brevity and, 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 and time, uh, but uh, of course uh, we are also keeping a close eye on local initiatives, many of which I, I think are very impactful, very powerful, uh, sometimes graphic, but needed to be in order to get that message uh, home. Uh, and of course, always looking to see where we can work with local authority partners. Uh, and that's why I think it's so important for us to support uh, Break Road Safety Week, Speed Down, Save Lives, and continue to remind drivers to adjust their speed because we know that is the single biggest uh, factor. Uh, the next campaign, of course, that we'll be working on in terms of road safety will be the festive uh, drink driving uh, campaign, which of course aims to keep people safe during the, the holiday uh, period. In terms of uh, enforcement, there was a couple of uh, areas that I wanted to touch upon. Uh, I know Mark Ruskell, uh, of course, has the, uh, the, the consultation responses uh, back now, and he's, uh, he's offered me a meeting to go over those consultation responses. I will, of course, take him up on that. Uh, I would like to hear from the, the, the responses, uh, quite a number of responses to his consultation. Uh, overwhelmingly positive, I understand, uh, in terms of the intention. Uh, of the bill and from a Scottish Government perspective, let me just reiterate what I said to, to Mark Ruskell the first time we met on, on this, which is that the Government will keep a very open mind. We think there are some practical issues that we'd have to work around. I don't think they're necessarily insurmountable, but let's have a conversation uh, to see uh, how that bill uh, can progress. Of course, the Scottish Government has guidelines uh, very uh, encouraging to local authorities around 20 mile per hour speed limits around build up residential areas, around schools and so on and so forth. But if we can and should go further, uh, then let's explore that with Mark Rusko and the work that he's doing. Uh, also, let me uh, give, a, give a nod to, to Dave Stewart in terms of graduated licensing scheme. I know that's something that he has raised with transport ministers before me uh, and continues to raise, and he and I are on the same page uh, in this regard. Perhaps it's worth us having another conversation about how we might look to, to exert some helpful pressure on the UK government uh, in this regard, and I'd be happy to, to have that conversation with him again. Can I also applaud the leadership of, of uh, the cross-party group in, in, in Clare, uh, Adamson, as I say, not just for bringing this forward, but the work that she's done, and she particularly talked about her other passion. Anybody who knows Claire knows that she has a real passion about technology uh, and, and digital uh, technology, of course, uh, and, and she mentioned that in, in road safety. From the Scottish Government perspective, we're always keen to trial technology uh, and to see where it can have an impact, of course, roll that out. Uh, some of those examples, for example, uh, would be in Sheriff Hall Roundabout, we use intelligent road studs to significantly reduce lane transgression and collision. Uh, and fairly, in now spring home, we have speed responsive traffic signals, kind of reverse discrimination if, they, uh, if, a, if a car or, in the case of spring home, usually an HGV is going too fast, uh, the, the lights will go uh, to red. Uh, on the A1, we have solar studs now better uh, to define junctions, of course, in the dark. On the A75, we have new vehicle activated signs that indicate the appropriate speed limit relating to the vehicle type. So a lot of technology uh, that, that often uh, helps to keep our roads uh, safe. So uh, we'll continue to, to roll that out uh, where we can. Uh, in terms of, uh, just to, to conclude, uh, presiding uh, officer, the Scottish Government and our partners are committed to road safety. We're never ever complacent about that. I'm absolutely resolute in my determination to save lives and meet the ultimate vision set out in the framework where no one is killed on Scotland's road. I'm very proud of the work that we're doing here, but I agree with every single 
uh, member in this chamber that more can be done, more should be done, and we'll certainly work with our partners at local authority level to ensure that our roads are safe, not just for those who use them now, uh, but for future generations to come. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you very much, Minister. Thank Claire Adamson and all the members who contributed. And that concludes the debate, and I now close this meeting.